You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, all of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Hey guys, this is your host Pat Randall of Declaring the Finished Work. Here we are on the first Thursday of the month. Just a reminder, uh, I'm brought, I'm dropping my podcast on the first and second Thursdays of the month. So I am no longer, um, you'll no longer hear my podcast every Thursday. But you can always go back uh, if you go out to one of our uh, listening platforms, which is uh, Blog Talk Radio backslash When Christians Speak. There's an archive out there with just loads of podcasts and pre recordings and so forth, uh, not only of, when, of uh, declaring the finished work, but also of the other broadcast on When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Well, this is exciting. I have a new phone. And of course, I'm I'm recording uh, through my phone, through an app on my phone. And usually, um, I record on my phone and then I transfer the recording I connect my phone to my laptop and transfer the recording into a audio editor that converts it into an MP3 player. And so if there's anything I want to correct or add or whatever, I do it through that that application. But now uh, I'm being forced to approach it with a different process. So... Prayerfully, it all works out, and I'm just going to push ahead. So I'm recording first. I've looked and and done some investigations about how this is supposed to work, and prayerfully, it works out the way I would hope that it works out. 
So here we are getting close to the holidays. Before we know it, we'll be in Thanksgiving and then Christmas. And of course, Halloween is at the end of the month for those of us who are into Halloween. But um, I haven't been in Halloween since my kids were um, very little. But anyway, um, what I am, the good word I have for you today, and prayerfully it is a good word for you, that you will be able to glean something that is spoken today um, that will encourage you and strengthen you, that will open up your perspective, and that you'll see things a little bit more clearly and uh, more deeply, that it will increase your understanding of who the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in your life and who you are in Him. Amen. Because we are never separated from Him and we need to live life in a way that we're not separated. And when I say that you will usually in the Christian environment, when they say, um, living life, like you're never separated from God, that he's always there with you and he's in you. And, but they often look at it from a moral perspective. You know, God is watching you. So he hears what you're saying. And if you're doing anything wrong, we're going to drop all of that. And just know God already knows, okay? He knows what you're thinking before you even think it or speak it. That's not the problem. And that's not an issue for God because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? And the world was not perfect. People were lying, stealing, cheating, doing everything that we still do today, okay? But he came for us, not to condemn us, but to save us, to save us from ourselves, basically, really, really. I mean, we do more damage to ourselves than uh, the devil does because we open up the door. We open up the door and we invite him in. He cannot come in. The enemy does not enter into your your environment, your personal space, unless you open up the door. You can just crack it. Just give him some space to slither on in. Okay. So, um, I'm going to try and keep this down to mm, 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops, but we'll see how it goes. So what I've entitled this particular uh, podcast session, uh, what's the bigger picture? Because what I find is not only in my own personal life, but in my interactions with others and in conversations with others and just listening to um, conversations, reading conversations on social media and, you know, that we as humans have a tendency to just stay in our own little spaces. And we're always looking for things that agree with the space that we're living in. And we refuse to allow anything that doesn't agree with our space, right? And our in, our space will include whatever tribe we we've, we've connected to. You know, a tribe, a group of people, whether it's your family and friends or, or your church or what, you know whatever, uh, your political affiliation. All of those things, and we connect to those things, and they become our 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 space, they become our environment. And God is about expanding, expanding our, our view, expanding our perspective. As you, as we've learned through science, that this world is always expanding. So God is always creating. He's a cre- creator. He didn't just, he didn't stop creating. He's still creating. Amen. So, 
we need to get a bigger picture. We need to not just think about what affects my life, but we have to think about what affects the lives of others as well. We can't just live within our own head space and our own little special needs and 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 we know that when we are selfish, we close out really a lot of good that the Lord has to offer us. But if we're closed in, which is what selfishness does, when we're so focused on ourselves and we close out all this goodness that the Lord wants us to experience, amen, because we're being selfish, we're being all about ourselves and and we're in a uh, an environment a culture now where it is so focused on me 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 people want to be stars on on the internet on social media look at me respond to what i have to say listen to my opinion it's always me 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 but anyway we so we want to expand and get a bigger picture but Um, interesting enough, I'm going to start today. I want to actually share two, two series that I've been watching, that I've been streaming, right? And, uh, but I know, you know, and hopefully I know, I hope you know that God can speak to us through anything, Anything there is because he is everywhere and everywhere present. And there are messages hidden everywhere if we have eyes to see and ears to hear. So I'm going to start off today just sharing a little bit about my watching and listening experience through these two um, series that I've, I've been currently watching. And interesting enough, uh, well, the first one, I immediately grasp the the greatness and the awesomeness of 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 God and His creation and His divine mind and His wisdom and His intelligence and how things are ordered. So this. This series is called Supernatural, and it's a documentary on wildlife. Now, I know that it's running on, I believe it's Disney Plus that that it's streaming on. So if you have Disney Plus, you can go out and see this wonderful uh, documentary, and it's done as a series, so there's different parts. Now, the first episode that I watched, I was so in awe. It's about relationships. It's a, it's about these animals in relationship in this particular um, forest, you know, because they go to different regions of the world and study the, the wildlife, the animals in, in those particular re- regions. But anyway, so they start off the first episode with these little, uh, in this forest, and they focus, they first begin to focus on the forest predator there. And it is, it's this large hawk. It's called a ghost hawk. And this hawk is able to go. He can be sitting on his perch and he can take off flying and go from zero to 40 miles an hour in a matter of seconds. Imagine that. How how powerful that is. Okay. God created this ghost hawk. Right. Okay. But he has prayed that, that there are things that to, to, to survive. He, he has prayed that he has to feed on. Because he's a, he's a, he's a meteor. So when he first takes off. In this jungle. Because he now he's hunting for food. All of the other animals become aware. And so the first little animal they show in this particular scene. Is this little bird. Who's aware that this guy is from miles away. He is able to pick up this predator. Is in flight. 
and on its way. And he begins to tweet. It's a signal. They've discovered that it's a signal. And he starts to tweet this warning out, right? And then you see this little thing. It's like a cross between a squirrel and a a chipmunk, you know, but some little rodent family, little cutie thing. It starts to imitate the very same sounds that this bird gave off. And he started to pass the signal around. So what is showing, basically what it's showing is how these animals, different species, like the rabbit hears it and, and he knows what is being uh, signaled and what, that it's a warning against uh, a danger that is approaching. And everybody starts to run into a secure place and take their places where they can feel secure from, from this danger that's on the way. And the fact, so in the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes of watching this, because it was like an hour episode, but I had to stop right there because I was so overwhelmed because I, you know, you never really think about these different, these animals that live in the forest and they're, they're uh, different species, but they're in relationship and that they're able to communicate with one another in a time of danger to, to protect one another. And I just thought, my God it's so amazing. There's so many things that we can learn about God just through nature, just through the animal kingdom. And the fact that everything is created to be in relationship. And so often we, we don't really see things. This was like a really eye opener for me. You're talking about getting a bigger picture. This gave me a bigger picture of of the animal kingdom and 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 the relationship that they have with one another. And I was just in awe of this this whole creation and just how amazing God is. And so if he's that detailed in setting up these kind of relationships even in the littlest animals, the birds and the little squirrels and the chipmunks and the rabbits and all the other little things that, that are running around. And, and I just thought, okay, what is man's problem? Why are we having such a difficult time recognizing our, the current danger to all of us, not just to a segment of the population. Because we're thinking, oh, you know, I'm in a good place or I'm pretty fast. So, you know, and I'm, you know, and I've got this hole in the ground so I can just go down into this, this hole in the ground. So I don't have to worry about this, this ghost hawk that's flying 40 miles an hour. And no. They were all connecting to one another. Why can't we see the danger that is approaching us and understanding that if it's a danger to one of us, it's a danger to all of us. And, and the, uh, the second episode, let me see, what kind of time am I I'm having right now? Uh, the, the second episode is about trees and how on in the ground in a forest they're like from their roots and these little networks like like uh vines little thin things and they 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 communicate excuse me they communicate under the ground through these networks right and They studied this one particular thing with a, a particular type of disease that attacks, it's a virus, that attacks trees and um, it attacks just specifically a certain type of tree. 
And this tree that has already been sick has the ability to warn other trees through this net powerful network, because they're all connected, of this virus that's currently present. And those trees are able to produce something within themselves. They produce something that safeguards and protects them from being overtaken by this virus. Now, the tree that already has this virus is not able to save itself, but it sends out the message to save and protect the other trees. And I'm just thinking, what a glorious story of relationship I'm seeing through this documentary. And the title of, the, did I say the title of the document? Well, the title of the document is Supernatural. And if you can, um, if you have access to it, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to, to, to see. And, uh, and I was just so blessed by it. Now, the other uh, series that I'm watching is uh, something that actually a type of, 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 of drama that I haven't watched. I used to be, you know, I like sci-fi, but normally I don't watch too much horror. But this particular series called Stranger Things... It is really about horror. It's it's about th- this small town that nothing really big ever happens to it. It's just just ordinary, and neighbors know each other, and on the surface, everything looks absolutely beautiful and homogenous and in harmony. But there is this thing that is living underneath. This 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 town, and so far it hadn't been a danger to the town, but a gate was open by man. Experiments that he was doing, a gate was opened, and it opened up to this place where this destructive presence is living and we would consider it evil because it is about destroying things as opposed to growing things right so it it attacks this town right and eventually they end up closing that gate which allowed this darkness to even enter into this this town and do this destruction. And um, in that first uh, series, the first, well, the first season uh, of the series, it comes to a closure where they have done what they needed to do to close that gate, even though there was loss, in the process, but they accomplish that goal. And then, you know, they go back into La La Land. They, they, you know, the, the children, they take doing their summer jobs and, you know, they just go back to, you know, their, their little hunkadory lives, not ever thinking about, well, if it got through once because someone opened up a gate that, it could come back, but they didn't stay watchful. And it did. Someone did open up the gate, right? Because it it was looking for power, it, to be able to have this power at their fingertips and be able to control things. This is, this is, what drove them to opening up this gate again. And so this darkness comes again and these creatures come again to attack. And they were not prepared because they thought that it no longer existed. But it still existed. 
It's just the gate had been closed. But the gate can be opened at any time by anyone looking, looking for this, thinking that they can gain something by opening this gate. And then I began to realize, and I'm thinking like, oh, this person has this wild imagination to, to come up with such a creative story. And I finally began to see that this person's imagination and creativity, it came from something. And I began to see here, right now in our country, we've had this darkness in our underbelly that has always existed there. And we do some quick fixes and it looks like it's gone away. And we go la, 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 la on our way and we think it's over. And then the gate is opened again. And this evil, this darkness, this destruction starts to filter back through into our lives again. We have to remember that evil is always present. The desire to have more than someone else, to have power over someone else, and to be in a great position for yourself, that spirit is always present with us, always present among the human race. And we need to be watchful and learn how to identify it, the symptoms when we see it. You know, in the scriptures, we are told to be wise as serpents, yet gentle as doves. So we are to be kind and to be loving and to be giving. But we also have to be wise as a serpent. We need to be able to recognize evil and darkness when we see it. We can't be so stuck in our own little worlds, as I was saying at the top of this podcast, so into our own little worlds that we don't see the bigger picture and we don't see the evil coming because we're in this little cocoon and in our little place. And so we think everything is hunkadory. But I'm telling you, in our current environment, the dangers, the darkness, the negativity, the divisiveness, this stuff that we're seeing is a danger to all of us, not just some of us, even the ones who are uh, perpetrating the divisiveness and the hate and the evil. It's a danger to them, too. They don't even because they're blind and they don't even see it. And that's how it works. They're seeking power and control. And yet, they're not only destroying what is right and what is good. But they're also destroying their lives. I'm going to stop there. I haven't even gotten to all the things that I wanted to get to. But, you know, I'll be back um, and see on the second next week. And we'll see how far we get there. But just start to think about this. You know, start to get the bigger picture. Start to be curious about other cultures, other other ethnic groups. And, and even about, you know, because I know, you know, I'm a Christian, so... And some of you who are listening may be Christians and some of you may not, but it, it doesn't matter. But I know that even in Christianity, for, for those of us who are and say that we're professing Christianity, that in our groups, you know, we will close off once we decide that we've got something and we we got the right thing and we know what we see and what we believe in la 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 
And if something comes and enters that is not the same as what we, we're already believing because it's different, it's different to us, and we don't understand that it's part of the bigger picture. So we say it's dangerous without even exploring to see if it is. Because if it is dangerous, the Holy Spirit will let you know. You're not left to your own devices. If you believe who the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is. If you believe that that. The father sent his only begotten son, not to condemn it, but to save it. That whatever it is that's going to come against you, that he will save you. If you have that confidence, then you're not afraid of, of words. You're not afraid of looking at ideologies or what other people are thinking, what other people are studying, whatever it is, what other people are teaching, uh, you don't have to be afraid because fear will close you off and make you insecure. So I'm going to stop right there because we're almost at 30 minutes and I'm just going to close out with prayer. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for your operation in this world and in our lives. And I thank you that we have never been separated from you, even though we were of the opinion that you were not present in our lives until we said the magic words of salvation. But you have always been with us, not only with us, but you have always been in us. And we've just awakened to that presence, the presence of you in our lives and, and knowing who we are, knowing our true identity. I thank you for the continued work that you're doing, that you're expanding. You're expanding the things that we are able to see and understand and that you are taking us deeper in you, and we thank you. We thank you for your continued blessings on our lives. And I thank you for the hope that keeps us anchored in you. Anchored, despite all that we see, that our hope is anchored in you. So bless your people, Lord. Bless the people of the world because you so love the world. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you that we are connecting to that love that is you. And that through us expressing this love, that changes will come into this realm. And we praise you for it. We thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. In Jesus' name. I pray, amen, and amen, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen, amen. So I will see you next Thursday. Tomorrow is the first Friday of the month, so we're talking about, um, I think, I believe it's Friday Night Joy, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me see, yep, first, first Friday of the month. Friday Night Joy with Pastor Ray Rose at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Bye.